Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about soldering, the exciting world of soldering. So in DIY audio, eventually there's going to come a point where you need to solder. And so I want to touch on something that's really important with soldering. If you want to create good quality solder, I'm going to assume that you've soldered in the past and that you've done it off and on as you need, but then I know for most soldering becomes a little bit of a lesson in frustration, um, particularly if you're doing parts that won't allow the solder to flow. And so what I want to talk about are how to create an actual good solder. And what I mean by good, I mean that the solder flows and that the joint is reliable. So I'm going to get straight to the point on this one. You need liquid flux and I'll explain why. So the purpose of liquid flux is to clean the thin layer of oxidation from your components that you're soldering. And so this layer of oxidation will exist on every metallic surface. It's just the way it is. And so the flux will actually heat up while your tip is touching the solder and the liquid flux will get to a critical temperature and it will begin to remove that layer of oxidation, allowing the flow of solder into the joint. So let's talk about two reasons why you want that layer of oxidation removed from your solder joint. So wetting forces. Wetting forces is a term that's used to describe how easily the liquid solder flows into your solder area. And so if there are lots of, if there's excess oxidation or if there's any oxidation for that matter, then your wetting forces will be low. And then if you're if the flux is able to adequately clean and remove the oxidation, then the wetting forces will be high. And so the idea here is that you have the tip, the, the mantra for soldering is you get in and you get out. And so if there's excess oxidation, your tip dwell time is going to be substantially longer. And the, the liquid solder will flow, but it will actually flow over top of that layer of oxidation. Which brings me to my next point. Intermetallic bond. Intermetallic bond is where you have a pure bond between the solder material and the material that you're soldering to, so your components that you're soldering. And so if the oxidation is not fully removed, then there will remain a very thin layer of oxidation between the, the solder material and your components. And so what that thin layer of oxidation does is it creates potential failure points due to thermal expansion or vibration of your components. So let's talk about flux core solder. Many people will say, well, I already have flux in my solder because there's solid flux inside this wire. So if you actually cut the wire, you can see that it's hollow and it's filled with a solid material that's a flux. Now, this would be suitable for general soldering applications, but for high high reliability applications where, for example, in the automotive industry, when you're manufacturing you know, safety components for vehicles. And I would also consider the audio type devices. You want the best joint integrity possible to maintain signal purity and also reliability as well that you would need to use a liquid flux. So I want to just uh, speak a little bit about my past experience. So I, my former career, I was a manufacturing engineering specialist and I was responsible for setting up soldering robots, which were literally robots with a soldering tip on the end of the arm. And it would go in and it would solder specific locations on a PCB board. And these PCB boards were used in critical safety components in a vehicle. And so I did my own testing and I wanted to see the effects of liquid solder. And so what I found was without the liquid solder, the tip would come down and it would take two or three seconds for the solder to melt and eventually flow into the area that the solder needed to flow. And so I used a thermal imaging gun, which was has a little LCD screen on the end of a gun, and you point it at the circuit board and it'll tell you, it'll give a graphical display of how hot individual components are on the circuit board during the soldering process. And so what I found was that the dwell time that was having to be in place 
was actually transferring excess heat to adjacent components on the circuit board. And when you look up the specification for the actual components on the board, I found that we are very close to the thermal limit of those actual components. So um, when we did testing on, so in manufacturing environment, you would actually test the com every single component that goes out the door would actually get function tested where you would run it through its paces to see uh, if the part functions properly and what we are seeing with the excess heat and also the poor solder we, we weren't getting what i referred to earlier as intermetallic bond we were seeing high fallout at the end of line tester um, so by introducing the liquid flux the tip would come down and it would immediately flow into the solder joint and that was because the liquid flux was doing its job it would remove the oxidation layer and uh, allow proper intermetallic bond and another note that i want to make with that is that the solder inspection according to there's a standard for visual inspection of solder integrity and it's according to what's called an ipc standard and the solder joints actually looked perfectly fine when you, it's only when you actually section through the solder joint and look at it under a microscope did you see that layer of oxidation and, you, and it was, you know, there was not that intermetallic bond. And so um, that just highlights the uh, importance of the liquid flux. The other aspect that I want to talk to you about is just in terms of when an engineer is designing a circuit board and he's designing the components and he's designing what process needs to be in place to solder these components, solderability is a binary process. Either your components are solderable or they're not. And that's mainly dependent on the flux, the liquid flux, and its ability to actually remove the layer of oxidation. And so when an engineer is designing a product, He's looking at the flux that he intends to use and he's going to do some trial manufacturing processes to establish whether the components are solderable. If he finds that there isn't sufficient wetting forces, then he needs to look at a more aggressive liquid flux that will more quickly remove that oxidation before the solder flows into the area. And so if then there isn't a flux available that is more aggressive enough to remove that oxidation, then he needs to actually look at the material properties of the components that he's soldering. And perhaps there's ways to uh, select components that have less oxidation and are more solderable. More solderable as in they are solderable or, they, or they're not. So that just, again, highlights the importance of liquid flux. So I hope you found this video interesting. I'm going to put the links in my description for the, the solder that I use, the little dispensing bottle with the little tip there and then um, you just apply that in a little dab on your solder area just before solder. And if you're in doubt, I encourage you to uh, purchase the liquid flux and give it a try. Do some tests yourself comparing with and without the liquid flux. That's it for today. Take care and stay safe.